104.5 The Team, 104.5theteam.com. On the phone right now, Steve D'Agostino, one of the top basketball trainers in the area, works with a number of the top players throughout Section 2. And, Dags, we've got high school games coming up this weekend. I know you're working with almost everyone. So who are you working with and who's impressed you as we move into 2015-16? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've got our usual suspects that we've worked with. Uh, you know, the, the the highest level team probably being the, the Shen boys and girls varsity teams. Um, you know, we had a couple up-and-coming teams as well. Colony, who got a couple kids back, Green Tech, um, that are 10th graders. They'll be they'll be doing pretty well again this year, too. But, you know, it's funny because we train, like you said, a lot of players, most of the players in the area, and now is the time where, where they separate. You know, they go through AAU season, and they're getting hyped up, and this kid's this, and this kid's that. Um, and now is the time, and I tell all these guys, you know, you, you work so hard, the only thing that really matters is, is what you do in the game. So, you know, it's, it's as, as much as they're excited to start playing, I'm, ex- I'm excited to see them play and see which ones really separate themselves from the pack, um, you know, and, and, and who really brings it this year. Now, I think I asked you back, and maybe it was about May or June, where Kevin Herter was going to go, and you said you thought Notre Dame was he was going to be in that type of conversation. It turns out you were yeah. dead, uh, you were dead on, and that he ends up committing to Maryland. Uh, just what makes him so special? What makes that a good fit? I mean, if you if you just take the fact that uh, it's Kevin Herter and he's from this area, right? If you take that whole thing out of the equation, you say, "Hey, I got a six six point guard who shoots the ball extremely well." And the best part of his game is that he finds players um, in open spots and his great passing and vision. You know, people are going to say, wow, that kid's a high major player. And they might go a step beyond and say, hey, that kid, if he figures it out, has a chance to play in the NBA. So, I, you know, I tried to, in the beginning, I tried to take out, okay, it's Kevin Herter, he's from Shenandoah, and thought of it that way. 6'6", shoots the ball very well, controls, controls the pace of the game and has great vision. You know, that, that's a high major player. So Kevin Herter, I think it's probably a foregone conclusion. He's the best player in the area. Andrew Playtech was was up in that conversation from Gilderland last year. He leaves and goes to prep school. So who's that next guy after Herter? Is it like a Hamir Wright from Albany Academy, or is it someone else we don't know as much about yet? Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's it's got to be Hamir Wright. Um, Mike Wynn had a good AAU season from CBA. Uh, Sloan Seymour as well. Um, from CBA. I mean, Sloan, I'm pretty sure, is probably going to be a high major player as well. 6'8", shoots the ball really well. The stretch four is a commodity in, in uh, college basketball now, so I think he'll be getting some big-time offers. Um, a guy that probably people haven't heard about, Isaiah Mull from, uh, from Colony. He's a 10th grader, uh, played at Green Tech last year. 6'4", shooter. I know a couple colleges, Division I, um, off the record, like him a little bit. So, It'll be uh, exciting to see how he performs this year as well. What's next for Scotia without Joe Cremo? What's next for the Tartans? Does this run of dominance continue? I, I love it. I mean, they've had, and we've been with Scotia for like four or five years, and everyone's like, oh, man, Scotia's going to stink this year. Well, they're definitely not going to be as good as they've been the last two years. No team is probably ever going to be that good. you know. But it's great to see some of their young guys um, get a chance to get on the court and play. And, and I think, personally, I think they're going to return to – you know, if we had Zach by on right now, he'd give you the stat of how many times Scotia's won like 15 games in like 15 years in a row or something like that. And they'll, I think they'll return to that. I think they'll figure it out in the foothills. You know, they'll be in the top four there, and then when sectional times uh, comes, hopefully they, uh, their younger guys have figured out the varsity level, and, and hopefully they can make a little bit of a run. But teams like Amsterdam um, are going to be are going to be pretty good this year. Does it impress you what Joe Cremo's doing already at UAlbany? I mean, look, he's playing 15 to 20 minutes already for a team that's got three all-conference guards and has been to the NCAA tournament three years in a row. What do you think of when you hear that? Yeah, and we knew that going in, right? So Joe and I, he's been working out with our other trainer, Shaver Mercy, all summer, too. They, they've been getting in the gym, and, and we've talked about all that stuff. And say, you know, there's not a lot of minutes, and whatever way you can get on the court, you can. But it's, it's funny with Joe, it's, you know, this is like the lack of vision that, that people have is, you know, in, in, with Scotia, he, he played a lot in the post. And so when people ask him, oh, man, he's a post player. I'm like, well, no, he's not a post player. He's a guard. Well, he doesn't make threes. He's a great shooter. Scotia doesn't need him to make threes. And then, like, well, what's he going to play at you all? He's going to play point guard because uh, he, can, he can pass the ball, he can handle, and he can control the game. And, and sure enough, he's playing point guard now. So, you know, nothing with Joe ever surprised me because he's such a hard worker. Um, so I think, you know, you all figured out that anytime they can get him on the court, 
it's a good thing. And, and I think it's a good thing for Joe because he went, I always tell him that they played in a utopia at Scotia. Everybody got along. They won a ton of games. It's great for him to experience some of these different things where, um, you know, now he's got to fight through a little adversity. He's not going to have a great game every night. And, you know, he's doing a great job. Back to the high schools, backtracking, Dags. Last year we had Joel Winkowski at Lake George who breaks the all-time Section 2 scoring record. Who's a small school player maybe that, that, that we won't get a chance to see or hear as much about that, that you're excited about? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, We've got Lufkin up at Argyle. Yeah, I think he's a given. Chris Butcher as well. He had a great year last year. He had like 30 points um, a game. He had a couple games of 50. They'll both be battling against each other. Um, you know, him, Lufkin. I think Lufkin's going to be really good too. Joe Girard. It'll be interesting to see how he keeps progressing. I mean, he had a great year last year. I know Lens Falls is an A, but, you know, there's a lot of guys who can put the ball in the basket. And for me, just looking from, like, a training aspect, and we get a lot of college coaches calling us and asking about guys, it's really about their progression. So, like, I want to see, like, is Joe Girard going to transfer over and really be able to be a point guard? Because at the next level, he's a point guard. He's got to be able to pass the ball and control pace of the game. Um, same thing with, with Luskin and and Butcher and some of those other guys as well. And then there's a kid from uh, Amsterdam who I haven't worked out, but I've heard really good things about Corey Bird, um, who's, who's supposed to be pretty good as well. Steve D'Agostino, everything you need to know about Section 2 hoops and uh, and the local hoop scene at Dags Basketball on Twitter. Dags, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. You too. We'll, we'll catch up soon.